mute button. Okay. Testing. You need to be in the booth to hear. My apologies. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, so at this time, I will call the meeting to order. Um, uh, if you are online and wish to make a comment, please use the chat function to contact um, the town staff. Um, and um, with that, I'll move on to the roll call. Um, I'm uh, Hugh Williams. I'm the chair of the Town of La Plata Board of Appeals. Um, uh, Maynard Thorne. Jonathan Burris. Um, I guess we'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. We do have an American flag over there. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. According to the agenda, I'm supposed to call us to order a second time. Um, and second, uh, we will move to the approval of the minutes from our November 16th, um, 2022 session, um, which I believe was sent out. Did you all receive the minutes? Yeah, motion uh, to approve. Uh, motion, there's a motion to approve. I will second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the minutes are approved. Um, and at this time, we'll open the hearing um, for uh, case number BOA 00629-2022. And um, I will briefly review the procedures. Town of the Plata Board of Appeals public hearings will be conducted in the following manner. At the discretion of the chairman, speaker's comments may be limited to three minutes and time may not be yielded. If you are joining the public hearing virtually and wish to speak for the record, you must announce your name when joining the meeting and state that you intend to speak during the hearing in the comment section. I think what that means is not um, state verbally that you want to speak when you join the session, but send a, um, a message in the chat um, function. Keep, please keep your phone audio muted until called to speak. If you are attending in person, a sign-in sheet is provided at the entry to the council chambers and you should indicate there that you wish to speak. The town clerk will add your name to the speaker's list. Registration to speak will end when the public hearing is opened, which is now. Written documents for the record should have been emailed to the town clerk who will have them presented to the chairman prior to the opening of the hearing. At the conclusion of this public hearing, if the record is held open and you have questions or would like to submit written documents for the record, please contact the town clerk um, prior to the close of the record um, by phone at 301-960-3507, by fax at 301 934-3965 or email legislative at townoflaplata.org. Um, at this time, uh, we will review um, the notice of the public record um, with um, Mr. Hauser. Are you online? I am. Hour, I'm sorry. Um, and um, I can't see you, but uh, will you raise your right hand to be sworn? Sure. If we need to. Um, well, do you, well, do you affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And you may proceed with your um, review of the public notice. I cause notice to be published in the Maryland Independent to be mailed by certified mail to the owners of all properties contiguous and adjacent and saw to it that signage be posted on the property giving notice of the time of place of hearing and herein lies my affidavit to that effect. And these um, certified mail receipts are from the notices that were sent out? They are. Um, would move. Um, the clerk's affidavit with exhibits into the record. Yeah. All right. Um, and next we have um, Director Harrington with the staff presentation. Good evening. So for the record, Janine Harrington, Director of Planning for the Town of La Plata. Uh, so tonight before you is a special exception request for a senior living community in the R21 zone. This project is being called the LaGrange Subdivision. 
Um, it is a, on approximately 24.984 acres. Um, and in accordance with the town code, they would need a, a special exception for a senior living community with section 191-10, it's use number seven. Um, and the special exception provisions for such use is listed in chapter 191-52.h.28. The property is currently undeveloped um, and under the comprehensive plan designation, it is residential low density. Um, so the R21 zone is in compliance with that. The surrounding zoning and land use to the north is residential Quailwood subdivision zoned R10. To the south is vacant commercial property, it's commercial highway. To the east is residential, the Haldane subdivision, also R21. And to the west is residential, there is rural residential under the county zoning and R21 under the town zoning. So for the background discussion on the proposed development, um, it is located on the south side of Port Tobacco Road at the intersection of Quailwood Parkway. As I mentioned, it is currently undeveloped. Um, and I already went through the surrounding uses. Uh, the Haldane subdivision is comprised of 18 single family dwellings. And they are um, currently, um, let's see here. There are several environmental areas around the property um, that they are proposing to serve as a natural buffer with uh, buffer yards uh, against the subject property and the commercially high, commercially zoned properties as well as the other residential properties. Belgrange subdivision was first proposed in 2007 as a cluster subdivision. It did receive preliminary plat approval. Um, however, uh, since they didn't get any further extensions past May 5th of 2015, uh, the project lost its vested zoning rights. The applicant is now proposing a senior living community comprised of 52 single family lots that vary in size from 5,903 square feet to 12,523 square feet, um, and most of the lots being between 7,000 and 9,000 square feet. Each of the lots will be improved with one single family detached home with two bedrooms and two baths. They do have some other options. Um, they will have garages as well as driveways, and there will be additional on-street parking spaces provided as needed. Uh, as I mentioned, there are several environmental features, including wetlands, streams, and steep slopes. And they did design the site with awareness of those existing environmental features um, and are uh, proposing not to disturb them. Uh, and they will be providing outdoor recreation space um, to accommodate the needs of active seniors living in the community. The Planning Commission reviewed this proposal on December 6th of 2022 and made the recommendation to uh, recommend approval to allow for the construction of a senior living community as shown and detailed in the Planning Commission staff report. I do wanna note that the town has begun a feasibility study uh, on transportation initiatives in the Southwest Quadrant. Uh, and basically the Southwest Quadrant goes from Port Tobacco Road or Route 6 down to Old Stagecoach Road within the town. Uh, within this study, uh, the town council moved on Monday, November 7th to start working on this. Uh, we have hired Mead and Hunt, our consultant, to perform the study and to provide or to get input from stakeholders, uh, including community representatives. And we have held a, an initial meeting to get some background information and to start reviewing. Um, and since the LaGrange subdivision is in the southwest quadrant, uh, we have had a preliminary discussion on how we can work together to provide interparcel connections. Um, we are not sure whether the interparcel connection can be realized due to the environmental features, especially on the southern border where the stream is located. Um, that could be a very uh, expensive uh, construction to uh, build a bridge uh, as that may be needed. So we do wanted to we wanted to point out that we are looking into this, but again, this may or may not be a feasible uh, interparcel connection. So in accordance with chapter 191-52 of the town code for the special exception, I have provided a table um, and I do reference their statement of justification, which is attached to the agenda, which provides additional details um, that I didn't wanna fill up the staff report with. Um, but looking at the standards under the town code, Access to a collector, arterial, or primary local street. Yes, they are um, located off of Port Tobacco Road or Route 6. Tract of not less than four acres. They are exceeding that uh, with 24 uh, more or less acres. The lot must have uh, at least 100 feet of frontage, and they do have that. Um, they have their side and rear setbacks uh, listed on their site plan. 
uh, which is in compliance with the development uh, table. Maximum overall density shall not exceed 15 dwelling units per acre. It does not. Um, and then all the dimensional requirements under table 20 have been met. They do have the buffer yard requirements for an F buffer yard provided and the residency and occupancy restrictions uh, will be required prior to um, occupancy permit. So staff has provided a recommendation to allow for the construction of a senior living community as shown in detailed uh, in the staff report. And we did provide the condition and we kept it relatively vague and um, open to um, your interpretation to provide or prior to the approval of a preliminary plat for the subject property, Cross Lane Construction LLC shall work in good faith with the Town of La Plata, MDOT State Highway Administration, Charles County Department of Planning and Growth Management, and other developer, uh, developers of subdivisions in the Southwest Quadrant to A, assess the traffic cumulative impact of projects in the Southwest Quadrant, B, develop a plan to address operational concerns in the Southwest Quadrant, including roadway approaches from other quadrants insofar as they may be affected, and C, agree on an equitable equitable distri distribution of costs, including participation by public agencies and, de and developers. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, you may have of me. Uh, I have a question. Um, did we get a traffic study done? We have not. We do not have an adequate public facilities ordinance and therefore a Traffic impact study is not a requirement under the town code at this point. Well, it was part of the package. We're looking at the list that said there was a going to be a traffic study completed. I just didn't see anything unless I skipped it. Where was that located? It was in the list of. Um, there, I think this. It, I have a similar question. The. Um, so I'm looking at page 87, okay. paragraph down. Okay, there you go. Um, the town has begun a feasibility study on transportation initiatives. So I know I don't. <laughs> on the Southwest uh, project. Um, I think that's what your question is. Yeah. Your question. Yeah, my, my question was actually relevant to that as well. It was, uh, did the study happen after um, our, last, our last meeting with the new traffic is coming from the Panda Express and all. Did this happen after that and that traffic that's going to be coming in as well? So we, we have not gotten into the actual feasibility study yet. So all of that is forthcoming. We have had the initial uh, go ahead from the town council to proceed and we have uh, hired Mead and Hunt to perform that feasibility study, but we have not gotten into the details of that. Is Are, are you guys prepared that if we we approve this and that feasibility study comes out wrong, we're gonna come back and redo this. That That's why I put a, a notation in here that um, there may, need, may be changes needed to the layout density of the development, different things um, pending this feasibility study. Thank you. So, Ms. Harrington, um, I'm looking at town code section 191.52 um, F C nine, which is application procedures where F F1 is part of special exception application. The applicant must provide the following information plus such additional information required for special exceptions, which I noted most of it is in there, a tax map, et cetera, um, is A, B, a detailed site plan, which is included, C, a written report that outlines the following items, and nine is the establishment and maintenance of a traffic management plan, a parking management plan, an indoor outdoor security plan, and a sanitation plan. So some of those and I think it was noted by the applicant that they don't apply to this because this isn't like a, a restaurant or a bar or any other type of business like that. It's a residential neighborhood, but I, I did not see a traffic management plan. Um, I did see some discussion of parking um, and a sanitation plan. I did not see that. Um, do you know, was, was any of that brought up at the Department of Planning meeting? It was not. The other question I have similar, um, when we, uh, when this board approved the special exception, the first special exception for what is now Panda Express to alter the entrance and egress on Route 6, 
um, as it was prior. It only you can only enter into that property on the corner there. Um, so what is that? Um, the southwest corner of Route 301 and Route 6. Um, we granted them a special exception, allowing egress from the property onto eastbound Route 6. Um, and that was dependent on certain um, uh, traffic issues and certain traffic um, uh, management by the State Highway Administration that, that operates that section of the road. With this, with the addition of 50 single family homes on Route 6 right there impact the traffic level that as such that's going to require that special exception to be reviewed. I do not know the answer to that. Potentially, um, there is additional review that needs to be done and part of the feasibility study with the traffic along Port Tobacco Road because um, it does come out at Quailwood Parkway. So we would have to review that. Um, and I'm glad you said that because that brings in uh, Craig. Are you still on? Yes, sir. Hey, Craig, quick question for you. Um, when we got the assessments for areas around it, Quailwood, um, did you get it? I didn't see it, but did you get a response back from their HOA on their inputs for this, especially since if uh, it's going to affect their traffic coming in and going out of there as well? I um, We haven't gotten quite to that part, but we have received no documentation from anyone um, either for or against to enter into the public record. Um, the receipts that I have prove that the town of La Plata has issued those letters. And if people responded, the only response we got was a returned receipt. And um, I'm not sure if Quail Woods is there. We also didn't hear back from the county commissioners. All right, thanks, Craig. Sure. I don't have any further questions for Ms. Harrington. Does anyone else? No. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, so at this time, um, we will move. Well, I guess I will move the um, exhibits presented by um, the uh, director of planning uh, into the record. Um, any objection? No. no. Um, and we will proceed to the applicant presentation um, at this time. Instead, it's Yeah, well, I was going to see who they saying it. Uh, I, I think what I'll do is, is everyone who you brought forward going to testify? Um, who is planning on, on testifying? Amy, myself, and probably Walt. Okay. The introduction for the uh, developer. Yeah. I understand. So um, I'll ask all three of you then to raise your right hands. Should we turn the mic off? Yes. Yes. We'll have to turn mine on too. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You good. You good. Make sure I didn't touch it too many times. All right. Um, do you affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yeah, I do. Okay. And from um, your uh, right to left, please state your names for the record. Adam Engel. Michael Taylor. Nathaniel Foreman. Amy Summer. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the board. Uh, my name is uh, Nate or Nathaniel Foreman. I'm an attorney with O'Malley, Miles, Nyland, and Gilmore. And it's my pleasure to be here this evening on behalf of the applicant, uh, Cross Lane Construction. Uh, with me, we have Adam Engel and Mike Taylor. Um, they will be the developer and the applicant here. And there's also the consultant who is not here this afternoon, but his name is um, Steve Peck with the uh, Epcon Communities, who is a nation nationwide developer of these uh, senior living communities, and they'll be working as kind of a consultant co-developer with Crosslane. So he's advising them, basically? Correct. Okay. That's, that's correct. And I also, to my left, I have uh, Miss Amy Summer and with the engineering firm of Charles P. Johnson. And farther back, there is Phil Hughes, who is also with Charles P. Johnson. Um, 
I would do want to begin by thanking Ms. Harrington for all of her help and her work in getting this case to where we are and the recommendations of her staff approval. Uh, we do agree with the recommendations and with the uh, staff report. Um, we are willing to work with the town as far as it is feasible to work with the transportation and the feasibility study. Uh, we are we had an initial meeting with the consultant um, and we are going to continue to have conversations. We will work. We, we will communicate in good faith, but we also want to kind of get moving with this development. So while we are willing to cooperate and have good faith communications, we also are trying to make sure we can also develop in a timely manner also. So um, there are some concerns we have with uh, the feasibility that may come back and require changes to the site. Um, we have had some com uh, preliminary communications as to how we may be able to accommodate those changes, but it may also require a little bit of a different layout to the site and to the overall density of the project. So um, just to basically say that we want to make sure that we are cooperating, doing what's best, what we think is best for the town, but also what we need to do to make this development a reality. Um, we do did prepare a sideshow presentation, which we did present to the Planning Commission. And if it's OK with the board, I would like to go through that um, with you this evening. Yes, please. OK, thank you. So this is just the cover page showing the kind of the picture is tilted 90 degrees, so it just fit better on the site. So, but we have another image. So, just so that's why you're like this. I don't remember the property looking like that. It's well because it doesn't. Um, next slide, please. All right, there we go. Uh, so, slides two, and then the next one basically just show kind of the layout of the property, and it's really just at the edge of the western border of the town of La Plata on the south side of Port Tobacco Road, uh, US Route 6. It's about 25 acres, and it's, I think, nope. Yeah, about 25 acres in the R21 zone. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here's a closer view of the site. As you can see, um, it is an oddly shaped site, so and there's a lot of environmental issues and concerns with it. And we have done our best to do preliminary engineering that would have as minimal impact to the um, environmental issues on the south side of the property as much as possible. Um, there will be oh, about 7.91 acres of woodland after development, uh, which is about almost a quarter of the pole property that we're trying to preserve as wooded. Uh, and, and yeah, so as you can kind of see, we kind of abut the Charles County Detention Center, the Haldane subdivision, and then the historic property over to the west side of us. And then south of us are the larger developments you can't see on here, the Steeplechase and, oh, is it, I want to call it Saddle Ridge, but that's not right. Saddle? Battle Creek, thank you. Uh, next slide, please. So here's just kind of an overview of what the project will look like and some of the amenities that we are offering. Um, it's 52 single family detached senior living house uh, units, dwelling units. Um, we have overall 13 acres of open space, which is going to include a uh, seating area and at least one pickleball court. I think one of the comments we got from these, the town engineer is maybe we need to have more, uh, given how popular pickleball seems to be these days. Uh, so we really, and one thing I will touch on later is this community really does encourage outdoor use, whether it's the communal space or whether it's in uh, the residents, future residents, if it's approved, their own property. Um, there are three types of housing that we're being provided. They are all one story to have you know main story living which is very useful for um, older residents uh, there's family room gourmet kitchens multiple bathrooms and they all have a private courtyard which we're going to go about uh, talk about in a little bit um, one of the good news and good things about the senior community is that they have well no impact on schools and very little impact on transportation especially when compared to um, a non-age-restricted development. 
Uh, I am not a traffic engineer, so I'm not going to pretend like I can give you the exact numbers, but uh, we do know from traffic studies that just senior communities do have lower impact on traffic and you're not having the peak hour impact that you would also with another residential just because of the change of lifestyle. You just don't have as, this, the same amount of impact or the need for as many cars or as many trips. I'm sorry. Uh, next slide, please. Here shows the overall site plan and uh, layout. Yeah, as I said, it is tilted 90 degrees. So on the right is Port Tobacco Road kind of going up and down, which actually goes east to west. Um, the main entranceway is off of Port Tobacco Road, and there is a spine road that connects the whole community. Um, there's a few cul-de-sacs. Um, the potential transportation improvements that we will be talking about really concern how this property or site would work as a throughway and how one of the cul-de-sacs, probably the, the one near the top of the screen, which is actually the furthest south, could be converted to, um, or could be changed in the future to um, help effectuate a bridge to cross the stream that's just down there. Um, it may require turning the cul-de-sacs into T or hammerhead intersections to help make sure we can get all the, the line alignments correct. Um, you can see that there is a large natural area that kind of bisects the property right in the middle of it, during, uh, in the spine road and to the south. Um, I believe that is a floodplain and there's a stream there that kind of bisects it. And that's why we are kind of prohibited from developing in there. We're staying outside the um, primary management area. And also the center of the community is where you're going to find most of the seating area and the pickleball court, because we think that's, you know, the center of the community and people were going to be, you know, drawn to the middle of it to help meet up. Um, I've never played pickleball, but it seems to be ext extremely popular. <laughs> that's a, I do. That's, that's a good question. Where is the, you're talking about that little isthmus of the oh. road crossing? I think oh. I see. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. That, yes. No clustering. Where you have the yeah the the, the, the yeah the cluster the, the the two pods of development on the north side and the south side or the left and right as it's shown on this image, um, there is lots of stormwater management facilities that we are proposing on the site to you know uh, filter and retain the the water runoff, and um, our engineer can speak more to that if there's any questions. I don't want to get myself in trouble by saying the wrong thing when it comes to the technical nature of. Uh, stormwater runoff. Um, you can see all the, the woodland that we're going to be uh, retaining, uh, the buffer yards between us and all of the residential developments. Um, okay, and uh, next slide, please. Um, here is uh, an image that we made sure to highlight, and it shows the private courtyards that are a feature of all of the different uh, residential units that we're proposing. Um, it allows for both passive and active outdoor space. You know, area there can be some gardening, just kind of enjoying the nice weather. And you know, the the four days of spring that Maryland ever gets, you know, you might want to enjoy it outside. All right, uh, next slide, please. Um, here is the Palazzo. Uh, this is the smallest of the units in terms of square footage. Um, as you can see, it's a garage. There's a, the courtyard to the side, and we have the facade and pictures of what the interior would look like on a typical model. Uh, next slide, please. Um, again, here's the portico. It's the medium-sized one. It's sort of between uh, a little bit bigger than the palazzo, and it again has a lot of the same features that the portico, that sorry, the palazzo has, but it's a, a bit bigger. Uh, next slide, please. And finally, here is the, the Promenade Third. It's the largest of the three types of units that we're on, on offer. Um, we really think that these units are, uh, their selection is indicative or responsive to the needs of active seniors at different varying, different price points and different sizes, depending on what is best for that uh, future resident. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, thank you. And with that, we're coming to the end of the PowerPoint presentation. Um, yes, one slide. Yes, please. Uh, can we go back to uh, one slide, please? Um, 
I'm assuming, since these are all single family homes, those are finished attics. The lights shining up at the top, second floor, above I, a garage. The future. It, it can be an option, an uh, option for. So. Well, when we do this, um, I think what I prefer to do, if that's okay with with the other members of, of the uh, of the board, is let the let everyone who's going to testify testify, and then you all can sit for questions as a panel um, afterwards. So if we want to move on to the next port, I think that way we have a presentation yeah. portion and then a cross examination portion, um, and um, uh, I think we'll do it in mass instead of one at a time. So whoever wants to present next. Um, go ahead and then we'll move into that. Well, thank and you. Although, and although I, I agreed with the question from the gallery, please limit uh, interruptions um, to preserve the record. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and we that was all we actually had planned and prepared for this evening. Okay. My team is here mostly to answer any questions or um, provide any additional information that uh, the, the board may have or even residents who are willing to want to ask questions. Very good. Um, So I read the statement of justification for the special exception application that you that you submitted. Um, and I do have some questions based on that. The required findings, this is what I was asking um, Ms. Harrington about earlier for section uh, 199 um, 52 and from uh, uh, from G and from F. Um, you have a significant amount of material in here to answer the issues that are raised in the application procedures in, in Section F of the statute. Um, and it does not appear to me that I think you were correct that a lot of those don't really apply in this situation. Um, but with regard to the um, Recreation portion. Is there a clubhouse or anything like that involved in the development, or just a public area? Uh, just a public area. I, with the uh, 52 units, I don't think it's feasible to provide a the clubhouse, especially with the maintenance and upkeep that would fall on the HOA. And it's all going to be run by the local HOA. That is correct. Yes. <clears throat> and um, with the uh, connection point onto Route Six. Um, I notice on the drawing, it appears that there is room for a sidewalk onto Route 6, or is that just speculation on the site plan? If those are sidewalks that rain the... Uh, you think it's... Oh. Maybe, maybe Siri can help, it sounds like. Maybe. <laughs> Um, I think that's just speculation at this point because we haven't really got into the final design of the site. We This is more of the proposed layout and we would really get into the specifics at the next stage if this special exception is approved. We didn't want to really put the cart before the horse if we didn't know this use wasn't permitted. Right. And so with regard, so the, the site plan that we're seeing here is not necessarily the final product that is going to be approved by whomever has to approve it after we grant these, if we grant the special exception. That is correct. However, there's a high likelihood it's going to be substantially similar to this. This We modeled it off of the uh, preliminary plan that was approved for this property back in 2008 or nine. I apologize, I always forget which year. So we didn't want to upset the apple cart too much when it came to what would have what was acceptable to the city back then. We figured this would be very acceptable to the city at this time around. Okay. And the with the buildings being built um, how how on this drawing how far is the um is the is the buffer on the frontage on route six with 45 feet 45 feet and um this is at the section of route six that's um two lanes correct that is correct and there's no center turn lane there that is correct and um, I guess there is a, a, a wide shoulder at, 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 at that area. We do have the wide shoulder, I guess, to accommodate farm equipment and et cetera. How, do you know how wide the shoulders are on this section? 
do not know that right off the top of our head right now. Um, the reason I'm asking is um, I feel like to some extent the cart has been put before the horse here because I keep hearing about a traffic feasibility study and a transportation feasibility study, which I would assume could include widening um, this section of Route 6 to accommodate the additional traffic from potentially this development, other developments farther to the west and south and to the north. Um, and this drawing does not give much room for Route 6 to be widened. Um, and the, the, the houses, at least the two that are on the at the entrance there might find themselves bordered by a, a major thoroughfare at some point in the future. Un understand, understood. Um, we have been working on this project for I think at least nine months at this point, almost to a year, and we, we were not made aware of the feasibility study of the transportation until recently. So we maybe in some respects we didn't know about those issues and we would have tried to accommodate them had we known. That's not to say we won't try to once again, as we mentioned, work with the city to see if those are things that would need to be done and how we could accommodate any sort of um, transportation improvements that um, have a reasonable basis or based on the impact we are uh, likely to have. Okay. If I may, um, yeah. so under the senior living community regulations, it states that there has to be an F buffer yard around the community. So, and the town attorney can correct me if I'm wrong, but with that stipulation being listed, because this is a resolution that we're writing, not necessarily approving the site plan, but the resolution with the details. And under the F buffer yard, there are different sizes. Um, as long as they meet the minimum F buffer yard, it would still be in compliance. And if the building, if, if, if the development is built as is now, uh, if this is, ends up being the site plan and State Highway wants to widen Route 6, um, what happens then? It would, we would have to amend it, but the state highway would be involved in the review um, at the engineering plans um, and with the preliminary plot. So any concerns on that end would be raised sooner rather than later. And um, for council, um, again, it was very, I, I, I do appreciate the thoroughness of the review of the statutory um factors mm -hmm. um however i did note that there is no traffic management plan and i think that while the um the sort of tenor of this section of which so that would be um what am i uh, section 191 52 f um does seem to be more geared towards a um a, a business location or something like that. I believe that, that you know this may be a, an issue in drafting of the statute rather than anything else. But it does. St I think that that would still apply um, uh, because obviously there's no um, maximum estimated occupant load of the establishment because you're not a you're not a restaurant. Um, uh, but we don't know the volume and types of vehicular and pedestrian traffic in the area. Um, we don't know what the um, these. If we don't have the establishment and maintenance of a traffic management plan or a parking management plan. I don't think we need a security plan necessarily, but it doesn't mention a sanitation plan, which would include um, trash pickup. Um, and I assume that this, uh, and, and so if you could address those issues for me as well as I guess this development will be tied into the town sewer and water system. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, and so with regard to the other factors that are in 191.52 FC9, uh, traffic management plan, parking management plan, and a sanitation plan, um, do you have anything that you can add to those or any of your panel members? Um, we do plan on doing a traffic study. Uh, we were very concerned with getting this use done uh, and under and making sure that we could proceed to the next step in the process when we actually start to do the preliminary plat and the engineering work. Um, one of and but we also that wasn't just waiting to do it later. We also because we built we based this on the original preliminary plan that was valid up until I think 2016 or so. 
we believe, and we're doing uh, senior housing, which has less of an impact on the roads, we believe that while not having the specific facts at this time, that the traffic numbers would come out lower than what this town had already deemed sufficient in that on this site. Okay, and the um, the original use was granted in 2007. Is that correct? Yes. And when had been the zoning code was updated? When? 2018 was when the zoning code was done. I don't believe there was any substantial changes to the senior living community section. Um, and based on the prior special exceptions that we did, did dealing with Hawthorne Green, we did not require a traffic management plan. Um, sanitation is, that was really for commercial uses. Sanitation, everyone's required to have town trash. It's on their utility bill. Um, and then the recommendation that I provided was with regard to the traffic. And not only are we going to have to work with the state highway, um, but we're also going to be looking at this overall Southwest feasibility study. So that's why I included the recommendation, which can be altered um, based on your preference. But that's uh, we definitely need to see that in more detail, and it's going to need uh, outside agency approval. Um. You've asked any questions while I'm going through my material. You want me to ask you a question? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, you already started answering it. Yeah, we'll start with that Thank one. You. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, again, uh, that uh, area that you saw up on the uh, as a second level is an optional third bedroom and bed location. And that's, I think, primary plant primarily planned for guests or maybe over, yeah, overnight guests or having family come visit, but it's not designed to be the main living quarters. Okay. I, like I said, I saw the lights and I saw we were saying it was single level and I was like, I didn't go to the best schools. <laughs> but, um, okay, so I think uh, since we're already talking to the developer, I, I have a question. Are you the same developer from 2007? No. Okay, is there a way, does anyone have an answer to why that never happened? Was it something that prevented that from happening in 2015? Why it canceled in 2015? To my knowledge, 2008 was when we had the kind of um, uh, housing bust. Um, there, there were several projects, including Heritage Green, now Pine Grove, Stagecoach, that kind of fell on the wayside during that time period. And I believe that that's what it was. It was just an economic atmosphere. Okay, so there wasn't a, something major that, that prevented them from doing anything. Okay. Um, Engineer. Thanks. Well, I'm going to skip our but sure. <laughs> He'll have to swear in then. He swear in. <laughs> you want to swear him? Yes, sir. <laughs> um, you raise your right hand for me. Um, do you uh, solemnly affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name for the record. Philip Hughes. Thank Thanks, sir. Um, I do. So I. I she gets mad when I refer to her as an engineer. <laughs> no problem. Uh, can you walk me through the, your process for the storm management? Um, the reason yeah. I asked, there's a couple different reasons mm -hmm. I'm looking at this. I know that area, and I know if you go down the street a little bit, you're going to see a pond down there and everything mm -hmm. like that, and where the water's running through. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I know you have that creek back there, and then when we do get the heavy rains, it does flood up into that, a that area. Uh, so I'm a little curious mm -hmm. on whether... I see the 7.1 uh, Woodland Marsh, and I'm assuming that's going to be the overflow to prevent it from coming into where the housings are going to be. And I'm assuming that's the reason for the 7.1 buffer. Is that correct, developer? I don't believe that's the reason for the 7.1 buffer, but there is a buffer that's outside the floodplain. So you do have an environmental buffer that includes the floodplain, so you're not allowed to go into the floodplain. So none of those stormwater management facilities are located within the floodplain. They're all outside of the floodplain, so they would not be inundated 
during um, any 100 year storm events because they're above the 100 year floodplain elevation. Okay. And this this will help prevent these senior citizens from having to buy flood insurance. Yes, they're all outside the floodplain, so they will not be required to purchase flood insurance. And the stormwater management facilities are outside the floodplain also. So they wouldn't be inundated and therefore they wouldn't affect their functionality during a, a, you know, a large storm event of 100 year or so. Okay. They're actually well above the floodplain right now. And the only th only other thing I have for you probably is um, the structures themselves. Mm -hmm. We we are prone to tornadoes. I'm sure you've been made aware of that here in La Plata. Um, and I'm assuming your structure is up to standards on. Well, I'm not a structural engineer, but they, they, they will have to meet the building code, you know, which would cover that. OK. Thank you, sir. I'm sure. OK. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. He's I'm sorry. Yeah. We're not done. Go no, ahead. I'm done with him. Oh, okay. okay, all right. Don't... I'm back to the attorney. <laughs> um, I, usually, I'm the one doing that type of questioning, so it's kind of weird being on this side. <laughs> Please, sir, continue. Oh, I love going at attorneys. No, <laughs> <laughs> usually deserve it, so it's fine. So, in our area, in our area here, um, and I, this is basically pretty much um, a question on. Uh, what you bring to the fight, what you bring to the table type question. Um, so like, um, yeah, the maples. You have um, Sage Point Gardens, you have SharePoint Senior Living. Um, you have Hawkins Gate. All these other senior living communities are in this area and, it's in, and that's just in La Plata. And then when you go up to White Plains and you go to Waldorf, tons more. Why do we need one more? Um, I honestly, the answer, I think every place needs more senior housing. A lot of counties find themselves, and I think Charles County and the town of La Plata in, includes in this, um, I mean, housing in a, as a general is just lacking in, in, in the nation. And I think there is a lack of accommodations for seniors outside of a traditional residential single family home that has, you know, multiple steps into their entry, multiple stairs for living. And the other side of it is like, you know, assisted living community or more of a, like a, I don't say nursing home, not that extent, but this is kind of like a missing middle when it comes to seniors. And so I can't say it specifically as to why maybe the town of La Plata has it, but there is a need for this type of housing throughout the country. And we think that this would be a great amenity to the town of La Plata at this location and it would help bridge the gap of housing needs because you know as seniors move into this these homes their existing homes or existing locations become available to help bring in a new family we actually had a wait list for hawthorne green section too and i've already had people asking me about this okay i should just let you answer miss harrington <laughs> no, I'm, oh, I'm thank oh. you but it's it's i think the question my concern was the fact that um la plata has exploded with housing exploded. Um, I think we're to the point now where most residents will tell you that we have more residents than we do jobs here. We have more residents than what's bringing the income into this 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 area. Um, so my concern really is like where where are we going to start drawing that line on on? I mean, I, I can't tell you I hate to say it this way, but I can't tell you how many people from uh, PG County or DC has moved down here it, because because Charles County is a wonderful place to be and one place to live. My concern is where do we start saying we need more uh, infrastructure outside of residents? And does that make this project one of those incidents where we don't need it? Because like I said, in Charles County, which includes Waldorf and White Plains and La Plata and stuff, there's tons of them right now. If um, if they don't want to leave La Plata, yes, they, we, we might need more. But if they're willing to go to White Plains, they might go to Charles or Waldorf, there's plenty more up there. So I just make me a believer on why we need this project and why we need to change a, a coding for that. You know, you understand know what, what I'm saying? Um, yes, I'm not sure what you meant by changing the coding. I'm just saying, because the reason, the reason we're here for this exception. Okay. Um, did you want to? Yes. Okay. Want to turn Thank over? you. Thanks. Um, Crosslane Construction partnered with EPCON Communities. EPCON is a, a 
a national franchise company out of uh, Columbus, Ohio. They have 66 franchisees across the United States. And when we took on the franchise agreement with EPCON, uh, we started to search for communities that we would be interested in in uh, building. So EPCON with all of their, their background, their, their history, plus their performance, they created what they call a hot sheet. They determined that this area was a need based on all the parameters and conditions that they set forth. So uh, in the, in the, again, that feasibility study was done way before we even put this uh, 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 property on the contract. And it showed that uh, the baby boomers are still, they haven't crest and, and, and started to decline. And because of that, uh, that LaGrange property was ideal. And then they also looked at the performance of Hawthorne. Again, as Janine said, there was a waiting list and there's still an opportunity for demand. So we felt that uh, it would be an added attraction to the city of La Plata. And with their product, what they're building, they've had great success throughout the United States. And we felt that, uh, again, we're adding uh, a beautiful community, a needed community for this area based on their, um, again, um, algorithm. And if I may, you, you're asking the right questions. So that is, uh... A hot topic right now is infrastructure. It's the number of houses that we're seeing. Um, and there is there is going to be a cap at some point. We have finite water allocations at this moment in time. Um, so the approval of the special exception is approving the use. It is not guaranteeing that the development is happening. Um, not to you know sound uh, morbid here, but there is a number of water allocations that are remaining. Staff is working on a development capacity analysis. We are taking into consideration the existing development, the proposed development, and conceptual development, including the annexations that were recently um, approved. So there is a list, and we're looking at the number of water allocations that are being utilized and how many we'll need. That is going to be our biggest limiting factor. We are going to have to upgrade our wastewater treatment plant, um, which we are currently working on in a phased approach. For other developments, there's going to be a cap with school seats. There's a number of schools and there's only so many seats available. Um, that's why certain neighborhoods are going to have to build schools. They're going to have to help pay to, you know, expand schools. Um, Pine Grove is one of them. They have to build a school or provide a site to build a school um, in order to help accommodate the elementary population. So there are certain factors that we have to take into consideration as we're doing our reviews. Um, and we are going to get to that point in the near future when we're looking at water allocations. We are working uh, with the county to try to increase our water allocations or to come up with some agreement in order to um, kind of see where we can go with water. Um, but at this point, we have a certain amount, and that's all we can do. We cannot approve a final plat. We cannot approve a building permit unless they have water allocations, sewer allocations, and school seats if needed, uh, not in this case. So we are monitoring that, and we are working with our town attorney um, to develop a development capacity analysis to kind of judge where we're going to start running into issues. Thank you. And if, if I may add just a little bit to that, I think that it was a great answer, Ms. Harrington. Um, and I, you know, part of it is this is a residential zone and we're going with the residential development that we thought would be necessary, would be helpful to the growth of La Plata without impacting more of the roads and the schools. But yes, the final design and final approval and this construction will come down to a lot of engineering concerns, a lot of resources review, but we just are not at that stage yet. Yeah. And if I, okay. if I may, it's Adam Engel with Crosslink Construction. Um, just want to address the uh, board and also everybody who's watching. So uh, you were saying sell you on it, on the community itself. And I just want to note, we're attempting to do this with the least possible impact to the community in terms of the overall La Plata area. So the lack of school seat impact and which is why this special exception, not only I'm 
not only re restricts the residents who can move into the community, but it, it enables them from, you know, my understanding is to be able to uh, attend schools in La Plata, uh, to not have that impact on that part of, the, part of the infrastructure. Our partnership with CPJ and the engineering firm is to make sure that we are doing the best we can to most responsibly connect to water and sewer and not have that impact. Of course, there will be some impact, but also just as have you understand also the size of the development is 52 homes so in terms of the overall impact compared to some other recent developments we've been aware or see ongoing progress with this is an attempt to have a niche community for a 55 plus uh, generation which is a significant part of the population in you know this kind of high income area of maryland in addition to that their family members are moving into this area and while none of us can really do anything to stop that we want to provide applicable housing to the parents so they can you know see grandparents or just extended family or whomever they might want to be around in this in region and so the site really as mike stated was the perfect uh spot for that which we identified so um i think you'll see a lot of positivity coming from this but every step we do with uh, the engineer and the attorney is to make sure we're doing it in the right way as you say so Yes, sir. And uh, how are we heating these homes? I don't think we've gotten that Natural far. Natural gas, the, LP, okay. Yeah, um, I, that's a big topic these days. I yeah. understand completely, but we, yes, we have not gotten that far yet. Okay. And the width of the street, I'm lo looking at, the, of course, the site plan. It all looks kind of tight, so I can't really judge how how wide is that main street? Is it 50 feet right away? Yeah. Right away, I think the street is Twenty-six, twenty-six foot curb to curb. From curb to curb. Yeah. Okay, and um, we're stuck with it one way in and one way out. <laughs> that that's part of the transportation feasibility and in, in those analysis analyses. Right. All right, but again, that small community portion of that. Well, I'm, I'm right. thinking of fire trucks going into do things in rescue squad well I, that i believe will be tested and, and confirmed at the time of preliminary plan and final plat and that, that is partially where the where the right of way comes into play is it yeah yeah so, yeah. Okay. so i mean the, the, thank you those are great questions and we think we can we have the the right answers for them we just haven't done the work or they haven't gotten the the green light to go ahead and try to do that work to fig to answer those questions just yet. Oh. Well, I was mainly asking for the the width of the street because there's going to be some on street parking, and fire trucks got to go down the middle. Understood. Uh, we, I mean, each house does have two garages, a two car garage. <laughs> the garage is going to be full of junk because they're moving from one house to to this one. It's going to be full of junk. Both cars are going to be in the driveway. And the kids are going to be parked on the street. So, are you saying there needs to be more storage facilities in the town of Lapeter? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> People just need to get rid of it. I, I think. I, I think that, like you said, the feasibility study, the chairman said, we we'll have to. It's really going to be important on a senior living because you want to mm -hmm. have more ambulances and fire trucks going into that community. And then, if someone at that first four houses is a problem, then no one else is getting home, or no one's getting out because you only got one street in and out. And that, that Thank you. It brings me to some of my questions. Um, uh, so we went through section uh, 1952F. Um, section G says the Board of Appeals shall not grant any special exception unless it finds from the evidence of the record that, and then lists out several factors, which you did address in your um, in your documents. Um, and I think it, A is the proposed use does not violate or adversely affect the town will play a comprehensive plan, this chapter or any other applicable law. Um, and you indicated that, and I think correctly, that the uh, it does conform with some of the goals with regard to um, the density of the development and the diversity of, of population. So having a senior citizen, um, and I agree, I, I agree with that. My my concern is that there are other points in the in the code. How does this um, uh, impact the goals of walkability in the town of Plata? 
how are these people going to be getting to and from facilities downtown? Um, that is a great question. Um, we will have, I believe, sidewalks throughout the community. Um, we can look at when we get farther down the road as to whether it's appropriate to provide sidewalks and especially with SHA along uh, to Fort Tobacco Road. You know, there is always the ch option or fear of it being an island where you have this one area of sidewalk, but then either side of it has nothing. So, I mean, we can try our best to support the walkability within our own community, uh, and we can try to work with uh, the joining or at least provide what we can on our property and try to see what else we could maybe work with when we go further down the road. And another issue is, um, although it's outside of the town of Uplata, the um, environmental concerns with regard to the Port Tobacco River, it appears that the stream that runs through this property, it, is that a, um, a direct tributary of the Port Tobacco River? Um, we don't know. We and, don't know that at the time. Of and so one of the environmental issues was concerning about the increase of development and the uh, impact on the nutrient loads that flow into the Port Tobacco River, as well as silt loads and things like that. Um, do we have an idea of how this development is going to impact um, those those runoff and um, nutrient load issues? Um, it sounds like from uh, what Mr. Burris had said previously that there already is some flooding or waterway issues at this site, at this area. Um, we are going to be providing stormwater management facilities that alleviate and fix those issues. Um, once again, I'm not the engineer, but I, I feel like that there would be a trickle, pardon the pun, trickle down. Okay, so yes, we would not only be holding the, 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 the stormwater on the site, we would also be treating it before it, uh, filter it and before it goes back into, you know, the, the stream. Okay, and so, and then um, B is the track shall be suitable for the development proposed. Um, you indicated that there are some sections that are undevelopable and that's the, that's the stream valley essentially, is that correct? Uh, yeah, the stream valley at the southern end and then the uh, environmental area that bisects the property. Okay. And the proposal of potentially um, expanding the, I guess, westernmost leg of the street that would be potentially a pass through to developments to the south, um, that would in fact go through the that buffer zone. Is that correct? That is correct. We are not proposing to impact that stream. It would have to be reviewed and approved by the Maryland Department of the Environment. And I will note that the even the stormwater management regulations from when this was previously approved in 2007, we updated our code in 2010. So they will have to come into compliance with the most recent stormwater management standards as well. ESD to the MAP. <laughs> I, I guess my concern is that right now, the uh, I, I would assume that the nutrient load is there is zero impact on the nutrient load because this is an undeveloped parcel and there's nothing there, correct? Um, there's a hay field. Um, that's sorry. That's true. Yeah. yeah, I understand. I, I'm, I, I will let the smarter people than me talk about stormwater. <laughs> that's not always true because runoff, even from barren fields or if you have pastures and things of that nature, generate a larger nutrient load, you know, and, you know, than what does a treated storm, you know, treated site that's providing stormwater management. The stormwater management facilities were designed by MDE specifically to remove nitrogen, phosphorus, heavy metals, and things of that nature through filtering and plant uptake through the root systems. So all of these stormwater management facilities that we're proposing on site are gravel wetlands and microbiofilters filters that will meet the criteria that was set out by, you know, Maryland Department of the Environment, you know, to meet that criteria and reduce the nutrient load on the stream. I mean, a lot of these sites that come in and get redeveloped actually help help the environment more than what was there or was pro what was previously proposed because they're adhering to and required to bring up to the current latest standards. Takes me back to the AICP exam. Mm -hmm. The most, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the highest pol non-point pollution is from uh, farms. Mm -hmm. um. 
I don't have, I think that section C is the proposed use will satisfy all use standards for the use set forth in subsection H, which is regarding, and I believe that that requirement is met. Um, D, the proposed use location will not adver adversely affect the health and safety of residents or workers um, in the area. Um, Ms. Harrington, I guess, is that more geared towards if we had some kind of industrial process or something like that going on here? Yes. Um, overburden existing and planned public facilities. And I think this is where most of the members of the board are very concerned um, because Route 6 is the size that it is and the increase in population is what it is and traffic is, um, I think, already past capacity in the area. Um, and so um, I'm very concerned that there is no traffic, even though it's not required by the statute, for certain things, I think that again in um, 191.52 F C 9 A, it says a traffic management plan, um, uh, and the the road itself is a public facility that may be overburdened by the even though, like you said, obviously there are much larger developments going in, like Pine Grove, which I believe is 4,000 planned single family mm -hmm. units. Um, that did not come before this board. Um, this one is. Um, and so the um, the impact on traffic, I think, is is extremely important. In addition, this being a 55 plus, and I think my colleagues on the board, have, so I'd like to hear more about traffic, but also um, the uh, the issue with the other public facility that I think is most um, going to be impacted by this is um, uh, Charles Regional Medical Center. And that is the, uh, you know, the closest and most logical place that anybody who is living in senior facility, senior living neighborhood would go in a medical emergency. Um, and CRMC does not necessarily have the best reputation for all aspects. Now, um, I don't mean to, you know, slander anybody, obviously, but um, my own, my daughter was born there. We had no problems, but I, you know, you hear complaints. Um, and I think most of that is due to um, probably due to volume. So is there anything planned or um, is there any coordination with University of Maryland and the medical center with regard to this and um, if, with this development? I would actually maybe ask the town attorney on this question because we don't have control over the hospital. It's a private entity. Um, and we can't force them to expand or to build new facilities. Um, and that's something that I know that we've had discussions with them on. We're sharing our development capacity analysis with them. Um, but I believe that that's something that's outside of our control on making them accommodate additional population. I agree with you that it's out, it's outside of the of our control. And I think that's exactly the issue. I don't know if um, Mr. Gallo has anything to add yeah, yeah it, that is um director harrington is correct that um medical services that are provided by like private entities are going to be out beyond any scope of an adequate public facilities ordinance um the services that you typically look at for government is the uh like emt fire services uh that are somewhat quasi-governmental because that's going to get you from point a to point b and usually the responsibility of the government when you call 911. So that that would be more of an area that you would look at uh, under an APFO. OK, and um, with with that, then what is it? Do we have any idea what the impact on EMS and fire services is going to be? We do not. Um, we are working on an adequate public facilities ordinance right now um, to try to address some of these things, but we don't have anything established at this point. We do have direct communication with our obviously we have our La Plata Police Department and they are growing as they, they can. And then we coordinate with the La Plata Volunteer Fire Department and others in the area. And um, how many, do we know how many ambulances the La Plata Volunteer, Volunteer Fire Department runs? I have no idea. I think it's just two of them. I, I think it's two in there, yeah. right over here. Oh, oh. this is the two. Um, all right. Um, and then um, I don't believe, I think the other factors in D, 
um, be detrimental to use or development of adjacent properties in the neighborhood. I mean, this isn't something new going into an existing neighborhood. I don't think that that's really the uh, at issue here. Um, four, change the character of the neighborhood in which the use is proposed. And again, this is not a change to an existing um, uh, building or, or business or something like that that's going to have that kind of impact. I don't believe it will, to, however, um, in four, um, change the character just based on population density um, because this will be adding additional population by design to um, uh, the, the um, so if it's, if this development is going to be increasing population density in this area, um, how do we address that with regard to the statute that says we can't we can't necessarily grant the special exception if it's going to change the um, population density? And uh, with a more detailed question, I guess would be the lot size has to be a minimum of two acres in this in R21 is my understanding. These are going to be 2.17 acres is what I read in the proposal. Um, is this development as a senior facility or senior living neighborhood going to be denser than it would be if it was just an ordinary residential neighborhood with no restrictions? It's, it's at a density very similar to the R21 zone. I, I mean, it's- There's a separate density development table for senior living compared to R21. Right, and that's what I'm yeah. asking. So by granting a special exception to make this a senior facility, that would, by nature, allow this to be a higher population density than if it was a ordinary R21. Is that correct? That is correct. R21 is 21,000 square foot lots. But uh, if, Mr. Chair, under that analysis, it sounds like you could almost never approve a special exception under a base zone if it provides for additional density than what the zone would normally allow. However, the the uh, the town council has already found that this use is permitted at this site subject to the special exception approval. So it's anticipated that this use can be allowed at this site, but it needs to show that the adverse impacts are not above and beyond what would already be associated with this type of use, i.e., is there anything really about this site that would make it incongruent with a senior living community? And I really don't think there is. It's you know. It, what is the density approximately that you're proposing? Because under the senior living community, they're allowed up to 15 dwelling units per acre. Or just a, a little bit over two. So it's two dwelling units per acre. So it's lower than what would be allowed at the maximum. Correct, and, and, I, and I noted that as well. I'm just the the you know like I said the 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 stat the the statute for our decision making is very clear. And I don't believe we're given a whole lot of discretion in our position. Um, for this, but um, and then number five is um, uh, constitute a nuisance because of noise, traffic, number of people, or type of physical activity. And I think again, um, this may be a statutory drafting issue because what this sounds to me is that if I was trying to put, I don't know, a sports facility in the middle of a residential neighborhood, that's obviously going to have an impact on traffic and et cetera. Mm -hmm. However, it does still say that. The Board of Appeals shall not grant any special exception unless it finds from the evidence of the record that the proposed use at the selected location will not constitute constitute a nuisance because of traffic. And we don't have a traffic study. Is that correct? We don't have so we don't have a traffic study. Not at this point, no. No. Okay. We I mean. As we can say before, that there is only the um, understanding that senior living does have less impact on transportation. Um, we could go in at a density with market rate housing and actually have higher, not have to go through this analysis and provide more AM and P PM peak hour trips, which, it, which would be worse for this community. Um, yes, there's other things we have to weigh if we're going to go that, uh, that in that direction which we decided not to, because we do think that given some of the existing issues with the, the school size and the transportation, that a senior living community can fit with the right density, similar density to the underlying zone and, per, and have less of an impact on traffic, school, water, noise. I mean, we just really believe it was going to be beneficial for this site and for the town of La Plata if we could develop it with a senior living community. I understand. 
and that's yes, sir. Mr. Burris. Question for you, real yes, quick. Um, when we talk about the the study for um, schooling, mm -hmm. um, you mentioned, are we are we referencing just that if there were because it's a senior living or adult community, there's going not going to be children there, and that's what we're looking at for the study, or are we taking into account the school that sits about 100 feet down the street from this community? Um, it no. Sorry. It is exempt from school seat allocations because there are no children allowed in the neighborhood. No, not so much the allocation, but like for the traffic, buses and everything else, it's going to be stopping about 100 feet down the road from where this community is going to be set up because there's a school sitting there at that church. Um, two. That two. Is it, is it two? One, at, there's ANS and across the street, there's the preschool at, great, at uh, the La Plata Methodist. I think that needs to be taken into consideration when we talk about the traffic pattern when we need do the analysis. Um, we're adding in those 55 homes minimum or you know roughly what 104 people. Um, if they're driving, we're adding that into the the chance of those school kids. That should be part of when we talk about school analysis, not just how many school age kids live in that community, if that makes sense. I understand what you're saying. Um, I am not sure if that's usually calculated when it comes to the impacts on schools, but I think it's a, a great point. As I will, I, I will say, yeah, I'm not worried about the impact on a school. I'm just worried about, yeah, like, so no, when same. they do the traffic study, the analysis, that should be something that needs to be considered because during those school hours, you know, you're slowing down or whatever. Then you got buses and you got parents parked out on the side of the mm -hmm. road waiting to pull in. That's part of the traffic study needs to happen. The safety of those kids. And now you're adding in senior drivers. <laughs> I'm not going to finish that thought. I'm not going to finish that thought for you. I'll leave that that. <laughs> it's, uh, that's another good point. Um, again, unlike non-age restricted housing, and I'm sorry if I keep sounding like you know broken record here, but it's not going to have the same sort of traffic in and out of the development, mostly out at the same time. So at least the beginning of, of the school days. You know, that's generally when commuters are leaving to go to the office or going to a job, and that would have impact on the students that are, uh, that are going and c catching the bus or walking. It, you know, it's unlikely to have that same sort of impact from this type of um, residence at the area. But I think that is one thing, if this special exception is approved and we do go further with transportation and the feasibility study, we can certainly discuss how that would actually be impacted. I think that's another question I have. I don't know the answer off the top of my head. Um, but as in, again, um, Mr. Gullo, if you have any input, please let me know. But um, we, since we don't have an adequate public facilities ordinance, we don't have any standards in our code to base a traffic impact study off of. Under other projects, we've been utilizing the Charles County Adequate Public Facilities Ordinance. And I think that that's something that we would have to look at to see if that would even be um, required to perform a traffic impact study because they have certain levels um, that meet there are certain things that are exempt if they're under a certain number of units there are a certain number of proposed um, you know daily trips so I think that's something else that we need to take into consideration is this may not yield the results that you're looking for if we utilize just like the Charles County APFO on traffic yeah let me follow up on that if I can Mr. Chairman typically in jurisdictions that don't have an adequate public facilities ordinance. So that's La Plata currently. What they're going to use as the standard uh, for special exceptions is, is this location going to create a more adverse impact than another location in the town that has the same zoning? And so if you look at this and say, the density that could be done without the special exception is higher than the proposed density, at least that's what I understand from the testimony. That means that the, without even getting into the details of the traffic study, the board could look at the generalities and say, okay, it won't be the same type of impact. The other thing you have to keep in mind is this is step one for the applicant. They need to go through the entire development review process. So when the planning commission gets in charge of all these things, they can require a traffic study and that may impact the density that they're allowed to actually build. So if you're looking at use, the planning commission is going to look at the specific densities again. 
you could set a cap, um, but you couldn't, for example, say you have to build 80 units. Uh, that's going to be the planning commission's bailiwick at that point in time. Okay. Um, anybody else have any questions? We do have three um, uh, other folks who have registered to speak. Does anybody okay. have any further questions for this panel? Um, nah, I'll, just, I'll ask you afterwards. Thank you. Uh, will, will there be a chance to respond to any other questions that have been made by other speakers? Um, I, I, I was um, I was going to the what my proposal was going to be was to because um, it is getting on in time and, and, and everything like that is to limit the additional speakers to three minutes, not including questions from the board for those speakers. Um, I think that um, again the it, they would the additional speakers as yourself would be um, limited to making a presentation rather than asking any additional questions. Um, but um, it, it, I will. I guess what I'll say is I will reserve on this witness for re possible rebuttal after okay. uh, additional witnesses. <laughs> so please don't discuss your testimony with anybody else. Never mind. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so if you guys can stand down um, for now, um, the first on my list here is Nathaniel Foreman. Mr. Foreman. Oh, that is you. <laughs> I believe I've testified already. Yes. And, and I can mark you down as not a resident of town then. I apologize for that. He yields his time. Well, he's not allowed to yield his time. <laughs> Except for the rebuttal. Um, I apologize, Mr. Foreman. Uh, number two is Maggie Larrick. Ma Ms. Larrick, come on up. Like I said, um, oh, do we have a clock? Oh, right. Hey, look at that. The three minute timer up there on the screen. Three minutes. Um, please keep that in mind. And again, I'm not going to include the board asking you okay. questions in your three minutes. So okay. um, uh, please raise your right hand. Do you swear under the penalties of perjury that any testimony you give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Okay, I did not come in here tonight prepared to speak, but boy, have I been sitting back over there in that chair just having a bit of a hissy from time to time. I'm not sure that this is the appropriate board to even talk to about, but I heard someone question the need for senior housing. Oh my goodness. I am a 40 year plus nurse, appropriate, independent senior housing is horribly lacking here. I moved here a year ago. It took me over a year to find some place to live that was appropriate. And what I wound up in was an, a, a condo um, where I can't have a bird feeder. I can't plant petunias. Um, I have my my outside space is a balcony that's smaller than this table. Okay, um, I would much prefer being in a facility like these folks are recommending. I am not able to clean my own gutters. No, I don't want to mow my grass. No, I don't want to shovel my driveway but I want to live in a house. I don't want to live in assisted living, which consists of a bedroom and then a community area for the rest of my living or an expensive apartment. Um, I looked into apartments in White Plains. I can't afford $2,500 a month, okay? I, it was cheaper for me to purchase my condo than it was to move into one of the senior apartments that you have here, okay? So like I said, I'm not sure that, that this is the appropriate forum for this, but oh my goodness, yes, appropriate independent senior living is needed, okay? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Larrick? Were you on the housing wait list? Hawthorne? No, but I'm going to get on it. <laughs> I'm going to get on it for these guys somewhere. Some, I, because seriously, um, it was it was just incredibly difficult to find an appropriate place to live. Ma'am, question for you. Sure. Do you know what the cost for Lagrange will end up being? I have no idea. So it could be more than twenty five hundred, which makes it. Absolute I don't know. Scale. I, I wouldn't even know if they're available for rent or sale at this point. There's yeah, really. I mean, I, I have no idea, but I'm, I, you know, I'm. Sale. 
yeah, it's it's sale, I'm sure. But you know, it it would be hopefully better than what I have now, <laughs> better than what I have now in terms of my lifestyle and being able to do what I'd really like to do. No, I understand that. I understand yeah. that. I'm just my concern is like you said, you, you the other place you were offered is like you can't afford a twenty five hundred. Right. It, but if I, you're buying I, this and this is costing you twenty five, twenty seven hundred a month, it's still no purpose to you then, right? Right. But I also know that there is a condo available in Washington Square right now at a price point that I can afford. It's not as big as I want it to be. <laughs> um, it's not where I want it to be in that community. If it were in a different place in that community, I'd, I'd be over there looking at it. Okay. And, and for that reason of being able to have a bird feeder and petunias in my yard. <laughs> okay. In general, you're, uh, let me ask you, where do you live? What, where uh, do I live? Eatland Station. Eatland Station, and that is not a 55 plus. No, it's not. And so... Um, and uh, and I'm there because I couldn't find a 55 plus in the independent living. And that's the key. There There is this, there is this slot, and these gentlemen are absolutely right, between people who require assisted living and people who can live by themselves in a house that requires mowed grass, shoveled sidewalks, shovel driveways, all those sort of things that you have to do to maintain a home. And we are just terribly lacking in that sort of housing. You got to come steeplechase. <laughs> um, steeplechase. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, oh. I'm sorry. May, may I make a quick comment? On, uh, just a quick comment. Not yet. Oh, no, we, no, no, it's all right. I just, I just wanted to respond. It's very short. Um, so we seek to uh, provide all of the things that the resident has mentioned in uh, her statement. However, I just want to point out that when it comes to selling the properties, and again, not the potentially the board to be talking to about it, but what we've noticed and is we do fit within the in average income of La Plata. Our homes will be priced to fit that. And also, as we know, seniors just 55 and older live on a fixed income. So we don't know what type of things they bring to the table, you know, to facilitate that the down payment, for example, but we will utilize all special types of programs that are applicable to them. So when it comes to monthly payment, it, it could not saying it will be, but it could very well be less expensive than renting and provide sense of ownership and fee simple housing, which mm -hmm. is, I just wanted to point that out. So I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Um, the, the last uh, speakers, Rachel settle, Ms. settle. And you, and you you've raised your right hand. Um, do you solemnly swear under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you may give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thanks. You may proceed. Good evening. My name is Rachel Settle. Uh, I realize I'm a day short on this, but I was working a 24-hour shift yesterday, uh, but here I am. <laughs> Uh, I do need to say that the following words are my own opinion and not any reflection of my employer. I currently live in the Kings Grant neighborhood with my husband and three kids, and I've lived there for four years. I'm 36 years old and have lived the majority of my life in Charles County and in La Plata for more than half of those years. My husband and I were married in 2014 and lived in Colonial Beach, which is a quaint little town much like La Plata used to be. We quickly realized that we were spending all of our sleeping hours over in Charles County and a lot of that time in La Plata. We quickly put our house up for sale and moved into uh, Carol's Place apartment. And uh, La Plata had, has always had this small town feel to me growing up. Uh, you knew everyone or knew someone who knew someone who knew someone. Farmers markets, town hall concerts on Friday nights during the summer, uh, walking down the town square with my kids in their stroller, smiling and waving at everyone, growing up playing sports at Laurel Springs. I so eagerly look forward to the snowflakes being hung. To me, that signifies the start of the Christmas season. All of these things and more fond memories that I associate with the small town feel of La Plata, except that that's all changing. It's my understanding that the annexation of the Hub and Hawthorne Yards has passed and that greatly saddens me. The Pine Grove development already has houses up and quite frankly, the sign and statue are pretty. It's quite the eyesore and doesn't mesh with small town La Plata. I'm standing in front of you today uh, to let you know that people residing in the town do not want any more neighborhood developments and to please stop this development at Coilwood and Route 6. 
Uh, bringing in more of these new homes is going to add even more overcrowding than we already have. It's added congestion to the roads that are already congested multiple times a day. Uh, just today, I was leaving Target and made a right onto Washington Avenue, and what should have only been an eight-minute trip to Matula to pick my daughter up took 20 minutes of bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. Um, the intersection at 6 and 301 is heavily congested multiple times a day due to two schools in the shopping center. And I haven't even brought up summertime and how congested 301 gets in the town due to bridge traffic. An additional viewpoint, excuse me, come February, I will have been employed as an EMT with Charles County Government Emergency Services for 16 years. We have severely understaffed and it's a daily struggle to serve the citizens adequately because of the town and county are growing faster than we can keep up with. My husband is currently a nurse at Charles Regional ER and the hospital is continually inundated with patients and wait times are many, many, many hours long. Further development of the town will only further add to the capacity, over capacity of our community roads and hospital, especially with the senior community development. As my husband said, it is smart to make this a senior community and 100% intentional as it's the path of least resistance, but La Plata is becoming known for its chaotic traffic congestion and overcrowding and losing its small town charm and appeal that brought so many of us here in the first place. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Settle? I can sort of speak in regards to the EMS stuff if anyone had any questions. Well, um, <laughs> you, you work for Charles County? Yes, emergency services. It's emergency services. Where what um where are you based? Uh currently at Mulberry. I'm being moved to Waldorf next week. Um, but I have worked at the Charles County Rescue Squad in La Plata. And the Charles County Rescue Squad, is that part of La Plata volunteers? So La Plata Volunteer Fire Department is strictly fireside, then Charles County Rescue Squad is strictly rescue or ambulances. Okay. Um Charles County Rescue Squad has three ambulances, but a um Charles County government paid ambulance is run out of that station. So there are four total ambulances? Three. Three. Okay. We're in one of their units. Okay. And that's the one that's located right over here? Yes. Um, yep. Two coverage. The post offices or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Chairman, we have two people online who may not have been able to sign up to speak in advance. We'd like to poll them to see if they're interested in speaking tonight. Certainly. And I will, what I'll do is actually write their name. If, we, if they do want to speak, I'll write their names on the speakers list so we can have them for the record. Very good. Mr. Peck, had you intended to speak tonight? Oh, I think he's on mute unless he's. No, I've unmuted him from here. Yeah. Mr. Peck. Oh, I just, I just unmuted. I do not need to speak. Thank you, sir. All right. Mr. Settle, had you intended to speak tonight? Uh, no, I didn't. I was uh, supporting my wife. Thank you, sir. Mr. sir Mr. Chairman, that's all the testimony for this evening. I understand. Um, thank you. And so I have, there is a, uh, a gentleman here in the audience. What's your name, sir? William Holt. William Holt. I apologize. I didn't realize that I would need to speak. Uh, this first one of these I've been to. I understand. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you again. We have a three minute limit, uh, excluding questions. Um, William raise your right hand. Uh, do you swear under the penalties of perjury that the, any testimony you give is going to be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. OK, please proceed. Thank you. Uh, I, I want to start at the very beginning with a gentleman on the screen who we can't see in the gallery said that uh, he's got receipts for all the adjoining property owners. My wife and I own LaGrange. That is the adjoining property. That's why I'm here. And we didn't get a notice. Now, we're not living at LaGrange right now. We are trying to get it in a livable condition. So. We are we are not, I guess, residents of the town. Although our mailing address where we do live is La Plata, but we're not residents of the town. But we do own 201 Port Tobacco Road, and we got no certified mail of any type. And we're at LaGrange just about every day, almost all day, uh, renovating, putting it back together. Right, that's number one. Number two, we did, I think the original, uh, thing back in 2015 was for like 40 or 42 residences. That's what I seem to recall from that. So that would be great if you went back to that. When you base your density on the entire property, I walked that property yesterday looking for Lisa Wills' dogs who got loose and 
you can't, you can't build on most of that in the back. It's a gully, but I know how it works. You base it on the whole thing. As far as traffic getting out the back, going through your neighborhood, making one of those cul-de-sacs, a road and a bridge. I mean, what are you going to run into the back of the prison or the uh, uh, car dealership? I don't know if they're in the, the sheriff's department and all that. I mean, where are they, they, they're not going to be able to come out the 301 through there, but I'm just throwing that out just because I walked through there yesterday. And traffic study, certain times of day, I can't get out of my driveway, which is the next property down. But that's, yeah, if it was wider, I, every time I come in from the town of La Plata to make a left, I worry that the people, They've got a shoulder they can go around and it is legal to pass someone making a left turn, but they they wait to the last second. And I'm like, when am I going to get rear ended here? But the shoulder's pretty wide there. It's not the road so much as it is the drivers that we have. That's all I've got. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, and thank um, you for letting me speak because I don't do this. No, and you're fine. So, Mr. Holt, I do want to note um, that a I do have a certified mail receipt to William and Karen Holt at 201 Port Tobacco Road, La Plata, Maryland, 20646. Uh, Mr. Clerk, did we get a um, a returned undelivered on that? Um, no, nothing was returned undelivered, but not all of the green receipts came back to us, but all of the white receipts showing that they had been mailed uh, did come back to us. Yeah, I have a mailbox. I check it several times a week I didn't get any certified and certainly nobody came to the door and left it and as far as people come to the door I get total strangers knocking on the door wanting to take a tour I have no so. doubt and I would like to take you up on that but I had no <laughs> intention I, 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 so I don't know uh, if he was off or looking that that was at um but um Mr Holt I do have um a question so um how large is your property eight acres eight acres and that is on the furthest border of the town of plate, is that correct? It, well, uh, very slim piece of our property apparently is just outside the town. Limits. Okay, but most of it is within the town. Well, almost all of it. Since just call it all our property lines to count the town's property line. What is if if I can ask, what is your planned use for the property once the renovations are completed? I'm gonna live there. Okay, and um, uh, do you know? This is the this is the property that's zoned rural residential. Is that correct? Do you I know that? assume so. Okay. And um, it was partially agriculture until we went to settlement, and then somebody at the county or the town or somebody said it can't be anymore, and they charge us a bunch of money in taxes to change it, which we didn't sign up for. I'd be happy to have it partially agriculture. Yeah, there's a agricultural easement. Uh, restriction on on the town of the plate. I've dealt with that that too. Um, so um, I used up my three minutes. Well, you already said um, you you're in there pretty much every day doing work. Yes, sir. And um, not. I'm, I mean, I can't guarantee I'm there every day, but pretty much if you've driven by there in the last year, you'll notice an awful lot's changed since two years before that. And so, um, in, in sorry, your testimony was that with regarding traffic, that you feel it's unsafe to well, it's turn in times your day, like, and it's not so much the highway as it is the people. So I'm, you know, I I can't nail that, nail these guys or any of their engineers on that. The shoulders, as I'm coming in to make a right, coming up from Port Tobacco, you pull off right there. There's room to get off the road, and I always try to unless I have one of my bigger trailers. But they come up over that hill, and they're they're getting it. Yeah. But that's that's not the town's fault, the road's fault, or my driveway's fault, or their driveway's fault for that matter. It's the way people are nowadays. Since COVID, it's crazy. Just it's, saying. Well, the, I can't confirm or deny whether or not the board was having a similar discussion amongst ourselves before the hearing started. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I appreciate your testimony, sir. Thank you. Well, and I'll, again, I apologize for not signing up. Thank I've added Mr. Thank Holt's you. name to the to the list for thank the record. For the um, uh, so, um, Mr. Um, uh, Foreman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I'm, I'll keep these very brief, um, mostly because thank you for testifying and thank all the residents for coming out and testifying. Um, 
the property was posted with notice of this hearing. So I, you know, I don't know what happened with the mailing, but we did. Well, hang on. Let's not uh, one at a time, though, Mr. Uh, Hold. I'm sorry. OK, but, but we have to. Uh, this is a uh, technically a quasi judicial proceeding, but don't worry. Yeah. So but yeah, so, you know, we tried to give as much notice and as with in accordance with the town rules. Um, the LaGrange property is also zoned R21, so it's the same zone as where we are. And um, regarding, and this is one of the main issues, and, uh, and it's an important issue, but, you know, if we are approved and we do go forward with the next step in the development process, and as the condition is written, we are required to work with the town in good faith about improvements, you know, that is we can make road improvements within reason to this the road and give it make it better than it currently is assuming it's not good and that would otherwise not happen if this is denied so we would be help funding some improvements on the roadway if deemed necessary so we would ask that you know this be approved I so appreciate thank you very much thank you um mr guillo um and any staff who may be listening in the in the booth um i'm gonna uh, i do have a a legal question for the uh town attorney so i am going to make a motion um pardon me pursuant to no oh, i lost my paperwork i can make a motion for a closed session very briefly um can't find my agenda um to discuss a thank uh um state government article three uh three five three oh five i'm sorry state government article section three dash three oh five b seven um to consult with council to obtain legal advice on a legal matter this is not a closed deliberation but i'm making a motion for closed session to discuss a legal issue with the town attorney um do i have a second Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, with the town attorney not being present, how do we do a closed session? Yes, yeah, so we'll have to ask uh, our, our technical people. Maybe uh, maybe she's, Kelly she's, can tell she's us. She's come out into the room. Okay, we're going to go into the next room, and I think we're going to have you um, join us there. Very good.
We're going to wait for Mr. Guillo to get back on our call here or go back on the record. And I see Mr. Guillo is back on. So we are um, back and lost my agenda, which I had with me in the other room. Here we go. We are back on the record in um, case number BOA 00629-2022. Um, the board has returned from a closed session. During that session, we consulted with Mr. Guillo, the town attorney. Um, and I will note for the record that we only discussed um, uh, legal issues and did not deliberate the um, matter um, before the board today. Um, at this time, we are going to move on to the next phase, which is deliberations regarding application. Um, I'm going to say what I think the findings of the board are at this point, but I'm open to discussion from the other members of the board. So looking at um, Town Hall Play to Code, um, section 191.52G, um, one, the Board of Appeals shall not grant any special exception unless it finds from the evidence of record that, um, uh, and then uh, at, in um, uh, pertinent part B, um, accessibility of the track to services and facilities required by the use, um, and D, um, uh, D2, overburden existing and planned public facilities, and um, D5 constitute a nuisance because of traffic. Um, unfortunately, at this time, there is no evidence in the record that it will not constitute a nuisance because of traffic. Um, as it is right now, there is no develop, there's nothing there. Um, and I understand, you know, I think council made a good argument that the proposed, um, uh, the proposal for the special exception of a senior living community would potentially have a lesser impact on traffic than um, an ordinary uh, residential subdivision. Um, however, we have no evidence in the record to um, to to uh, consider of that. And unfortunately, our statute is very um, clear that we shall not grant any special exception unless we find that it will not negatively affect or not constitute a nuisance because of traffic. Um, we've had some testimony that it may um, uh, in, in overburden existing public facilities um, from someone who is a, a, an emergency medical technician, although, again, she's not testifying on behalf of her organization or anything like that, and her testimony is not to be attributed to, to the Charles County um, health, health Services. Um, there is a hole in the record at this time with regard to this special exception. Um, and so uh, we discussed with the attorney what our possible um, options are. Um, my first um, proposal would be to um, essentially remand this back to the Department of Planning to um, Director Harrington um, to determine uh, uh, whether or not a traffic study of some kind can be done. Um, because while the application meets the statutory requirements for the Department of Planning at this time, it does not meet the statutory requirement that I laid out in Section 191.52 G. Um, and uh, we, uh, uh, the board is not, uh, according to my reading and, and confirmed by counsel, um, we're not allowed any discretion in this matter. Um, this is a, uh, we are bound by the statute that we are enforcing. Um, and so that is where we are. So my first proposal would be to remand this back to the department, to staff, to determine um, uh, a traffic um, impact. And that would, I guess, result in continuing the hearing um, until such evidence can be, um, uh, until such evidence can be added to the record. Um, and we'd have to set a date for um, returning um, with that, um, you know, you know we want to make sure that that is feasible um, for all the parties involved. Um, the alternative um, proposal would be that we 
based on the statute, have to deny the request for special exception at this time um, because the statutory requirements are not met um, after the hearing today. So I will, um, those are my two proposals and I will open it up to other members of the board for any further discussion. Mr. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Torn. <laughs> if we could just get that, that one piece with the traffic study, that's why, that's why I mentioned it in the beginning, because I looked at everything before I got here and I know that's, that's something that's needed for us to look at, so. Mr. Burris, do you have any other proposals? Um, no, I, I don't have any additional proposals. I, I think um, the two options are there. I think we all can probably agree which option is the best of the two for us all. Um, I think that, uh, <clears throat> I think um, no one's asking anyone to stand outside and count vehicles when they drive by. I think we're looking at more like, you know, is there somewhere that matches where you're put in this place and pull that data? Pull that data that shows, hey, this, you know, somewhere between 50, 60 homes at a senior living community was put here, traffic was increased or decreased, or there's been no incidents, traffic incidents, anything like that. That gives you some type of idea of what we're going to see or what's going to happen in that area. I'm thinking that's roughly the best way of doing it um, on, in the quickest way. Uh, of of being able to do this to set up the next, uh, I don't say a repeat, but a do over. Okay. So um, then, what I would do, apologies, um, is I would move. Um, yes, sir. Well, at at this point, I think we're where we are, um, Council. I I understand. One clarification. Oh, certainly, certainly. Light tap. Light. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> what attorney has a light touch? Uh, <laughs> um, Mr. Mr. Burris, uh, um, you mentioned that you're not looking for us to do counting cars. You kind of want more of like a comp analysis. Um, we do have a traffic engineer. He was not available this evening, and we actually had engaged him to do the traffic study because that was going to be the, the next step. Um, if this matter is remanded to the Planning Commission for further consideration, would um, an analysis from our traffic expert be considered appropriate or what you're looking for? Or I'm, I, At this time, I'm not sure that the board can recommend. So the uh, council, the problem that I have is um, that I am bound by what by the we are bound by what evidence is presented in the record. And there's nothing in the record either way, really, about traffic. Um, and that is a required factor um, in the statute that we have to um, uh, examine. And again, Director Harrington noted correctly that generally there isn't a requirement in, in the zoning statute or any of the statutes in, in the town of Plata for traffic studies prior to et cetera. Um, and so you can make it through the planning commission. This, this is, uh, I believe, an issue with the statutes, but you can make it through the planning commission stage without having done a traffic study. But um, I believe our statute requires something in the record to show that it will not be a nuisance or uh, overburdening um, existing public facilities. Um, and so whatever evidence can be presented to do that, I think would be fair. But uh, again, you know, I want to make this fair to all involved. Um, and I think um, at this time, uh, the best way to do that is to, uh, rem I, get, I don't know if this is the correct phrase because of where, but it's basically to remand this to the department, not to the commission, to the department Smart. for staff to um, see if this can be remedied. If I may provide a clarification, generally what we've done with other projects um, is that we would ask them to submit a um, scope uh, basically, under the Charles County APFO regulations, you would um, first submit the scope of work, and that would kind of determine next steps with the adequate public facilities ordinance. Again, I don't know the county's APFO regulations offhand, um, so the scope would determine whether a full traffic impact study was warranted. Um, when we get this scope, it would be sent to the Maryland Department of Transportation as well as the Charles County um, Planning and Growth Management, since it's their regulations and then we would determine if there's anything warranted beyond the scope 
Thank okay. you, Council. I'm going to jump in real quick on behalf of the board. It's Jay Gullo. I'm the town attorney. Um, uh, Ms. Harrington and I will work with you if this is the way the vote goes to continue this, and we'll talk about what we need to fill the record here versus what you might need further in the process. And, and so um, the so what I'll do now then is um, I'm going to uh, ask for a motion. Um, or I will make a motion um, to uh, request that the town clerk and the town attorney um, write an order essentially remanding this case back to the department and to staff um, for further um, study with regard to the um, overburdening existing and planned public facilities and whether or not this will constitute a nuisance um, based on traffic or any other issues that were not addressed in the hearing today and continue um, the hearing to a later date. Um, is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, I'm going to abstain on that vote, um, but there's two to one, so the, um, the vote carries. Um, is that sufficient, Mr. Glillo? Yes, that's sufficient. Let me get the vote count again. It was two in favor, none against, and one abstain, correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would imagine what we'll do here now is we'll draft the order that'll carry this out to formalize it for the file, and then the staff will be in touch with the uh, board members and the applicants to set another date to continue the hearing. We'll be doing another round of advertising for the new date uh, to all the adjoining property owners, post the property, et cetera, like we've done for this. And uh, then you can move forward without revisiting what you did. You can move forward from there. Yes, perfect. And, um, and, and it's my understanding that because there will be potentially new testimony and evidence offered, the, uh, the general public will be again allowed to sign up to speak or any other interested parties. That's correct. Um, we'll move on then to um, other business. Is there any other business of the board tonight? Madam Clerk, Mr. Clerk, I'm sorry. I don't think there is. So at this point, it is 9.13, um, and we will adjourn. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.